Okay, thanks everyone. We're gonna switch over to VFD output monitoring for the HDPQ family. Um, so let's just go through, we're talking about specifically the monitoring the output of a VFD. That's the challenge in this particular application. And just a basic review, VFD stands for a variable frequency drive. You may also hear it referred to as an ASD or an adjustable speed drive. You may also see adjustable frequency drive. And, and what this really is, it's a type of motor controller. And what these motor controllers specifically do is they vary the voltage and the frequency of the motor's power supply. And that's the way of adjusting the speed of the motor. And um, the benefits of that is that it saves energy, improved efficiency, and it provides more direct control for that motor. I'm certainly not an expert in this. Uh, many of you know certainly much more than what, uh, what I do. Um, but this is the application of this. And one of the basic things is that VFD outputs are rectangular waveforms. They're not sine waves. And they're not 50, 60 hertz. They vary in frequency, hence the name VFD. So that prevents their, I'm sorry, prevents, uh, presents some challenges for a power monitor. So, you know, what are the topics on monitoring VFDs? First of all, what is not unique? When we're looking at the input of a VFD, which was the, the capability, uh, the limiting capability of all of our prior generation of products, it's measured just like any other 50 or 60 Hertz circuit. So the input of a VFD is not a challenge um, for any prior Dranitz products, HTPQ or most power analyzers. It's the output of the VFD. And what's unique about that output is that, again, as I said before, it's a rectangular waveform, not a sine wave, but the frequency is not that standard 60 Hertz or 50 Hertz. Um, just as a little bit of background, power monitors like to synchronize to a signal and that's usually 50 or 60 Hertz. And the reason for that is because it helps to get accurate um, phase angle and relationship measurements between the voltage channels, but also of course, voltage and current for power factor and watts and VAs and things like that. And when that frequency is changing dynamically, it's hard to do that because the frequency of the voltage is also not related to the frequency of the current anymore. So that presents some challenges. So a traditional power meter can't sync to the voltage due to that constantly changing frequency. So then one would ask, how does the HDPQ family do this? And how does it measure the output of a VFD? And it's actually, the answer is quite simple, is that you synchronize to the output current not the output voltage because the voltage is changing. The current is a, is a very stable or fairly stable 60 or 50 Hertz sine wave. So it's what we call a syncable sine wave. So that means we can get the instrument to synchronize on that to produce those accurate measurements, okay? So what we're gonna talk about on how to set up the instrument and show you the reporting. Again, like the, uh, the, the other things we we're talking about before with harmonics, this applies to both our HDPQ plus portable models or, or instruments, the SP, but also all four model tiers, the Visa, the Guide, the Explorer and the Explorer 400. So VFD capabilities and VFD output capabilities are available equally the same in all four of those model tiers amongst the uh, plus portable and the SP instruments that we have. So just to review here, the HDPQ family, um, really there's only two things you need to do. And the first one is to set the sync channel to channel a current, as I mentioned. And that's on this nominal and frequency tab. And you could see right over here, sync channel is the A current. You could do the D current if you want, but the A current is typically right on that output of that VFD. Okay, you're measuring channel A and that's one of the, uh, um, the phases. So if you have a single phase VFD, which is there, but not as frequently used, but certainly a three phase VFD, just choose channel A sync channel. And of course, as it implies, you have to be measuring current to do this, okay? Uh, it's also recommended to turn on the anti-aliasing filters. And that just, uh, that just uh, filters out a lot of the switching noise um, from the VFDs, because it's a high speed switching and it's a pulse width modulation on that voltage. And this will filter out um, the majority of that noise and have not that have uh, be a burden for your measurements. And it also prevent a lot of triggering on a lot of that that you may not want to have in your measurements. 
So the HTTPQ family provides you the following things. And most of these things are, are just like any other type of monitoring session. Um, voltage trending, current trending, all the power parameters, the current harmonics, but it's important to, to share what is not provided and that's reliable harmonic measurements. Um, and that's because of what we talked about before with the IEEE 519 and the 61000-4-7. They are kind of dependent on a 60 or a 50 Hertz um, uh, system to be measuring. And those standards are locked into that type of scenario. However, when you're measuring the output of an, a VFD, we don't have that scenario, certainly for voltage because of that pulse width modulation. Um, so the harmonics are not available as they would be normally, I'm sorry, the voltage harmonics, the current harmonics should be perfectly fine because that's still a 50 or 60 Hertz um, waveform that the instrument can use. So really as a rule of thumb, you get everything, but the voltage harmonics are not available to you. And that's just inherent to the way this a VFD works. Okay, um, Thurman, did you want to do the live demonstration or would you Ab like me to do that? Absolutely. Uh Give okay. me, uh, grant me permission and I'll be more yep. than happy just to present. stop sharing. Okay. okay. You go grab it. All righty. And, uh, and while you do that, I'll read the chats and I'll prepare for the data in Dranview. Okay. Hello again, folks. Um, and make sure I'm unmuted and hopefully everyone can see my screen here. It's shared. So it, your approach to this, as uh, Ross mentioned earlier, some of the results that you would get uh, as far as training of data. Now, I, I've been involved in VFD applications and, and those of you that are familiar with it where, um, you know, VFD in the simplest terms is really a dimmer switch for a motor. Uh, and, and in general, motors don't like VFDs. Uh, there are general practices that are used when you're implementing VFDs with the motor you hear things about keeping the leads between the output of the BFD and the input to the motor terminals as short as possible so you don't have the magnification of the transients because with the, the transients are actually caused by the pulse width modulation of the waveforms that Ross mentioned earlier for the voltage waveforms. In some cases, the longer lead length, you actually have a magnification of those transients at the motor terminals. And so those magnifications of those transients is often the most common cause of what you have breakdown uh, insulation in the motor in the motor windings. So that's an, another application in which you, you might monitor the output of a VFD. Uh, you might even deploy two instruments where you have one instrument at the output of the VFD and the other instrument at the input in the motor terminals. So you might, you know, that's another common practice, but, uh, but the monitoring approach is, is pretty much the same. You're going to use the widget setup because you, you have to go in and you have to change the sync channel. So, uh, you know, the widget setup is going to present you with these tabs here that we're, we're familiar with by now. Uh, you know, you're going to select your, uh, the probes, the appropriate current probes for the application, uh, the wiring config, if it's Delta, you know, it's going to be a three phase usually, either it's Y connected or Delta connected. And then when you reach this tab here, the nominal frequency, this is where you would change the sync. And again, you have the two options here. You can use channel A or you can use channel D. Now, how the whole thing works is that the inductive nature of the motor will tend to smooth out the current waveforms to make them more sinusoidal. And so the more sinusoidal they become, the instrument has the ability to sync on those sinusoidal waveforms. So that's the whole key of how it works and why you would use channel, uh, why you would, you would sync, or, uh, sync to channel A amps or channel D amps. Uh, and then, you know, your approach is the monitoring mode, you know, which template are you going to use for the application? Uh, it really depends if it's more or less power quality, you're, you know, use the standard, uh, uh, power quality template, the IEEE version. If you just simply just want to uh, uh, collect trend data, what we call data logs, when you want to monitor a parameter over the period of time, it's it's trend, then you might want to consider using something like long-term time readings that enables the instrument to act as a data logger. Uh, the difference between the two of uh, long-term time readings and continuous logging is really the interval in which you record the data. 
by default, long-term time readings give you a 10 minute interval where continuous logging gives you a one second interval. The other thing I should mention here is that these two monitoring templates are, you can edit them. So you can make one look like the other. Uh, the templates is always a good idea to start from because it does most of the work for you. So you don't have to create a template from scratch, so to speak. You can kind of begin with some defaults and then just monitor just to uh, just edit a few of the parameters to get you started. Um, and of course, whenever you select any of the monitoring uh, templates and what you see here, if you're going to modify a monitoring template for a given application, that's all done under what's called the trigger limits tab. And you, you do things such as set customized limits, change your time intervals for journals and things of that nature. So that's the rule of thumb. You select a monitoring template to kind of get you started. And then if you need to edit that template for any given application, you would do it in this, in this screen here. Uh, and then finally is the finalization stage in which we talked about uh, in the last example. And here you may do things, you may want to manage the memory before you get started. Uh, you may have something unique where you want to start and stop a window. Uh, and then, of course, if you want to name, uh, give the monitoring session a unique name for better organization and post, this is where your options are. And then the final stage is uh, to initiate monitoring. And uh, you just simply select accept. And now the instrument is, um, will begin uh, the collection of data. So that's an example. And again, the whole key is that the, as, as Ross will show you in some of the post data that he's collected, you can see uh, the, the characteristics of the current waveform, which becomes more sinusoidal, which makes it possible to sync from the current waveform. So um, right, that's great. the example here, Ross. I'll give presentation rights back to you. Thank you, Tharm. Good job. Okay. And uh, it should be all yours. Okay, just bear with me. Let me switch my screens. All right, you guys should see Dran View in just a second. I see it come up on my other entry here. So thank you, Thurman, good job. Um, uh, we're just about done with this particular section. Uh, I just wanted to show you some of the data recorded um, and then we'll get to the chats here. So uh, really the, the, the right hand pane starts the, or tells the story here. You could see the event details of just a snapshot of information recorded where what I've done is I've taken the three phase information, but I'm only displaying channel A voltage and channel A current. This is a three phase uh, Delta connected motor. So you'll see a little phase shift here from that Delta connection, but on top is channel A voltage and the bottom is channel A current. And as we mentioned before, and Thurman recently mentioned, you could just see that sinusoidal nature of the current. This is that, um, it's a 60 Hertz sine wave, but you could see the pulse width uh, um, uh, modification or modulation um, for the VFD here on the voltage channel. And you'll see the same for phases B, phases C shifted as you normally would. And um, uh, so you could see that relationship here, but I have the whole power of DRAN view um, to, to do the analysis. I can do my normal power quality um, recording. I can do anything that I want within the capabilities of DRANView. There's nothing special or nothing that's been limited here um, based upon that, other than maybe the harmonics that we mentioned before for voltage. Um, so you can go look and you can see our regular event list here. Here's our, our timeline trend. And uh, William had, I think uh, William Cutter had a question before about can the power be done? Yes, this is just a quick power trend here. This is a very short um, um, motor test that was done. So there's not much as far as time duration, but what I have here is the voltage, the current and the total KW here. Um, and it's a, it's a low power motor here. This is just a uh, offline test here or a simulated test, but yes, uh, Bill, you can get, or William, you can get your power information. So well, let me pause and let's go look at the, uh, the chats here and then we'll wrap up this particular set. Hey, Bruce, before yeah, you ahead. hit the, before sure. you hit the, uh, questions, we didn't show anyone how to, uh, set the, uh, anti-aliasing on and off. Okay. Yeah, that's. That that's uh, it came up in the chat. We're, we're, yeah, we we're talked gonna, about it, but it, it's done before you even start setting up the okay, instrument. Okay, we'll so tell you what. I'll just do that really quick. Let me just share my simulator here. 
Um, just bear with me a second. It would just be quicker if we do that. So here's a uh, simulator. This is a real live user interface of HDPQ. And um, the, there's really not much difference other than you can't record because it's a simulator. But um, to what, what Ken is mentioning, and thanks for uh, flagging that, um, you go to set up instrument and you see this little advanced button on the bottom left here. You click advanced and set anti-aliasing and you set it to on or off. So you just uh, click the on off button in the lower left hand corner. You can see now I have it as on. So from this point forward, you've switched those filters on. Um, so it's independent of monitoring to do this, um, but it is, you should do that prior to starting monitoring. And this physically switches in anti-aliasing filters in the front end of the instrument. And uh, the reason why we have these filters is that they're required for IEC 61000-4-30 Class A Edition 3 compliance. So they default to off because these filters tend to filter out transients uh, and other high speed information. But to be fully 100% compliant with the standard, um, the edition three standard, um, you should have anti-aliasing on. And we do recommend this for this VFD application. There is another benefit of that in filtering out a lot of the switching noise from the VFD. So, okay, let me go back to shared DRAN view and then we will uh, go review the questions here. Okay. Um, Let's see what we have. Um, uh, so we mentioned that they have uh, numerous drives, uh, 40 uh, volts, one point or 13.8 kV. So it's very helpful. You're welcome. Uh, can Dranitz calculate the power? Yes. And as I showed before, William, um, it can uh, calculate the power um, from the uh, from the system just as it normally would. Um, okay. Uh, what are the other settings? Uh, Ron Humphrey asks, what are the other settings needed to be changed on the nominal and frequency tab? Um, there are no other settings uh, in regards to that. And uh, thank you for the reminder on the anti-aliasing filter, which we just covered. So um, William asked, I wonder if that filter is in the unit setups or in the specific recording section. And we just addressed that. We showed you where it was. Again, it's in the uh, the instrument setup. It's, it's not in the uh, monitoring setup because it, it's kind of controlling the front end of the instrument to do that. So, okay, um, we're going to cut off this particular section. Then we're going to move on to DC monitoring, which will be very short. So just bear with me a second, please. <laughs> 